2017 Bentley Continental Super Sports Review From 135,760 pounds 8. Point. Everything that Bentley does well, the Super Sports does better than ever, everything that Bentley does badly, the Super Sports still does badly. What is it? 700 horsepower and 750 lb foot of torque. If you are to understand this new Bentley Continental Super Sports, it is not enough to focus on one figure or the other, power will tell you how fast this car is, and it is torque that determines how it is fast. It's only the combination of the two that reveals the true character of this car, and its unique place among high performance machinery. Of course, we have been here before. Twice. There's not much need to dwell on the 1925 3.0 liter Bentley Super Sports, the first car to fly the wings guaranteed to do 100 miles per hour. The name was resurrected in 2009 to grace a two-seat, carbon fiber seated Continental GT, lighter to the tune of 110 kg with a little more power and torque, a 40 colon 60 front to rear torque split, firmer suspension bushes and a wider rear track. Clearly, it was quicker than the Continental speed from which it was derived, and so too did it feel different, tauter, better balanced, less of a GT and more of a super sports car. The name may be the same this time around, but the approach is dramatically different. This new super sports hasn't bothered to go on much of a diet, is available with only four seats and doesn't fiddle with the torque distribution, the rear track or even the suspension settings, springs, bars and dampers are all the same as a standard continental speed, as are the tires. True, it is 40 kilograms lighter thanks to standard carbon ceramic discs and the Acrapo V titanium rear exhaust box already used on 2014's 2V8 based GT3R, but such savings seem almost incidental. This Super Sports is all about the engine. And given this is a Bentley, perhaps it should be no other way. If you believe you should always play to your strengths, there's no doubting that the 6.0 liter W12 motor under the bonnet of the Continental has been its greatest strength since the car first emerged, blinking into the sunlight, back in 2003. So Bentley has asked one more favor before both car and engine are replaced towards the end of this year by an all-new Continental with another, yet only distantly related, direct injection 6.0 liter W12 so new it's only so far been used in the Bentayga. Bigger Mitsubishi turbochargers blowing 1.4 bar instead of 0.9 bar don't raise power by a mere 21 bhp like the old Super Sports, but by more than three times that amount, from the 637 bhp of the current speed to a nice, round 700 bhp. And don't forget the torque, the old Super Sports added just 37 pounds foot, whereas this one piles on a mighty 130 pounds foot, taking it up to a total of 750 pounds foot. What's it like? It is at first a puzzling car to drive. The Super Sports name makes a promise backed by the carbon fiber trim, bonnet vents, rear wing and Alcantara lined interior. But the car appears to have another agenda, which is simply to make you feel like an artillery shell fired from a large field gun every time you put your foot down. Ignore the 3.4 SEC 0 to 60 miles per hour time, for that is a function of traction as much as torque. It is the 7.2 SEC 0 to 100 miles per hour time that establishes the Super Sports as Bentley's first ultra high performance road car. That's quicker than we recorded for the new Honda NSX, Mercedes AMG GTS and the latest Nissan GTR. The last Super Sports needed 8.9 SEC to do the same. And it does it because those big blowers don't just allow the Super Sports to alter the rotation of the earth at low RPM, but they also allow the motor to bang into its rev limiter with unprecedented ferocity at its top end. Torque and power, power and torque. But it's frustrating, too. For 14 years, the Continental GT has, in all its myriad guises, always been stronger in engine than chassis. 
and to lavish such additional riches on the former while leaving the latter clutching at straws it has the torque vectoring system first used on the GT3 are now fully integrated with the traction and stability control system serves only to accentuate the disparity between the two. Additional power and torque can bring alive the chassis of some cars, but they tend to be those with a pre-existing surfeit of grip over power like the Porsche Cayman. In almost 2.3 tons of nose-heavy Bentley, this was never going to be the case. So you have to adapt your style of driving to suit the car, a necessary evil I resent in any machine. Despite its enormous ceramic brake discs, you have be conservative with your braking and overstop the car before turning in. Do so on a trailing throttle and you can feel the torque vectoring braking the inside rear wheel to tuck you into the apex, but it will still run wide if you are ambitious with entry speed. Only when you do it Bentley's way slow in, fast out does it all start to make sense. The vectoring works far better driving away from the apex, you can sense incipient understeer and the system functioning effectively to quell it. Lift off the throttle and it will also adjust its line quite pleasantly and precisely, impressively so for a car of this heft. And it's actually very good in fast curves you just aim for an early apex, lob the car in as you ease off the gas and get back on the power as soon as you can. But regardless of its name, to drive, this is not a true sports car, let alone a super sports machine. Like every other Bentley of the last 86 years, it is a high tourer albeit one possessing ultra high performance, and there is nothing inherently wrong with that, for while the attributes it brings are less headline hungry, they are no less valuable. For instance, despite its enormous 2-1 iron forged alloy rims, the Bentley rides exquisitely well. It's wonderfully quiet at motorway speeds and you know you could drive all day and night in its enormous seats and emerge without an ache. Add in the immense sense of engineering integrity and that unique Bentley sense of solidity, and it's easy to see how the whole package could appeal to a certain constituency of well-heeled customer even at 212,500 pounds, particularly as Bentley is limiting production to 710 units, its power output in PS. After all, Bentley sold all they could make of the last Super Sports, about 1,800 in the end, even though it was around £30,000 cheaper than this model in real terms. Should I buy one? Certain cars reveal their nature in the first few miles, but that has never been the Bentley way, and by calling this one Super Sports, Bentley has clouded its character further. To me, a Super Sports car is one focused on the provision of pure driving pleasure almost to the exclusion of everything else, and this is not that car. Think of it instead as a traditional Bentley turned up to 11. What Bentleys do badly, it still does badly, what Bentleys do well, it does better than ever. Once I understood that, I came to like the car and, more than anything, admire the fact that 14 years on, it remains a charming and competitive proposition in the marketplace. But the wait for Bentley's first true sports car in a lifetime continues. The company will be 100 years old in 2019, and there will be no better opportunity than that. Bentley Continental Super Sports Location Lisbon, Portugal Price £212,500 Engine W12 5,998 cubic centimeters, petrol Power 700 bhp at 5900 rpm torque 750 pounds foot at 2050 rpm 0 to 62 miles per hour 3.5 sec top speed 209 miles per hour gearbox 8 spd dual clutch automatic curb weight 2280 kilograms Economy. 18.0 mpg, combined. CO2. 358g slash km, 37%. Rivals. Rolls-Royce Wraith, Mercedes-AMG S65 Coupe. 